Hey, college coaches. This is Coach Anthony Williams, founder and CEO of Connected Athletics. Uh, we are a new startup company based in Austin, Texas. Uh, our Spotlight podcast is, is focused on helping give high school student athletes a voice, a platform to tell their story and help them successfully transition from high school to college and then either into a career in their sport professionally or into a nice job once they get their degree uh, in college. Uh, we've got a we've got our first tonight's kind of a monumental night for our company. We've got our first female student athlete. For those of you that have been following the show, we've been doing uh, probably over 200 uh, football players from all over the state of Texas and all over the country. Uh, but tonight we're expanding the platform into uh, women's basketball. Uh, I happen to know a lot about this prospect, and we'll get to her in a second. But before we do, I want to shout out my sponsors real quick, uh, specifically um, uh, the ones that have helped us out kind of get things going. Uh, when it comes to getting this show uh, started and, and supporting us. Uh, as you can see here, um, our first sponsor is a company uh, called Go Edit. Uh, they are a graphics company based out of Nebraska. Uh, they have software that, that, that student athletes and high school coaches and club coaches can use to create really nice edits with uh, stats, game schedules, um, you know, things like that um, that help them in the recruiting process to post fresh content to the timelines during the recruiting process. So shout out to the Go Edit graphics guys. Our second sponsor is Buffalo Wild Wings. I think we all love wings and Buffalo Wild Wings has uh, reached out to me and wants to be more involved in Texas high school athletics. And right now they're focused on helping uh, certain schools uh, raise some money for their football programs in the Houston and San Antonio area. So thank you to Buffalo Wild Wings. And then lastly, our last sponsor is a company called Epic. Uh, Epic stands for uh, Every Play I Compete. Uh, they're a, a sports apparel company based out of Houston, Texas. Uh, the CEO is a good friend of mine, Stefan Johnson. Uh, so if you're looking for wristbands or arm sleeves or gloves or really uh, 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 creative masks or uniforms, uh, you might want to give uh, reach out to Epic. Uh, right now, their website is under development, but you can reach out to them on their Twitter handle at, uh, uh, at IamEpic247. Once again, IamEpic247. So thanks uh, to our sponsors there. But let's get to uh, our athlete that we have with us on the, on the, on the podcast, somebody I've known uh, since she was a baby and somebody I've been following. She's one of the more talented uh, basketball prospects in the class of 22. Uh, Aaliyah Holmes, uh, she's a class of 22 guard from Pflugerville High School. Uh, she's 5'9", 155 pounds, strong GPA of 3.2, and her club team is Drive Nation. Uh, she's been playing with them now for a while. They do a great job of showcasing and developing talent, but Aaliyah, how are you doing this evening? I'm good, how are you? I'm excellent. So let's just jump right in here. Uh, you're right now, right in the middle uh, of the recruiting process, which is such a surprise for me since I've seen you play since you were a baby. But uh, now that you being a, a junior, uh, most coaches are going to want to ask the first thing, academics. Tell us about the importance that you put in your academics. Um, I think academics for me is, you know, the strongest part because, you know, you can't be an athlete without being a student athlete, you know, all the way until you're professional. So um, I have a family, um, as you know, that is very big on grades. Um, I have a lot of role models and a lot of resources that I can use. And um, grades is everything to me. Um, improving constantly is one of my bigger things. Um, always learning on and off the court, so. Okay. Well, tell us, you know, what are some of your favorite classes? What are some of your favorite subjects that drive that GPA? Um, right now, I'm, I'm a pretty big English person. Um, writing, reading, all that stuff. That's something that I really enjoy in history. History and English, probably my two favorite subjects. Okay. Um, are there, you know, one thing we know as student athletes, uh, there's always a teacher or a coach or a tutor that kind of helps us along the way. Are there any teachers at Flugerville High School or middle school or even back to elementary that you want to shout out that's helped you uh, keep your academics at a high level? Oh, shout out to Ms. Bryson. Um, she was my eighth grade math teacher. And taking algebra in the eighth grade, um, I think at first I didn't really understand the importance of, hey, this is your GPA and you need this for everything. And she kind of like instilled that in me and got me going. So shout out to her. I like that. Appreciate that a lot. You know, um, as student athletes, you know, college coaches always want to understand um, 
how an athlete learns, not just in the classroom, but in your case on the basketball court, would you say that you're more of a verbal, visual, or hands-on learning style? Um, I think verbal. I'm a very verbal learner. Um, um, visual too. So I like to I like to hear it and, and process it, and then I like to see it, um, depending. Yeah. Um, but I'm also very big on um, learning it through teaching other people. So that's something that I enjoy in the classroom, and it, it helps me. Is that learning style the same on the basketball court? Is it the same or are you more of a, a hands-on, like you want the coach to show you uh, how to down screen or how to set your feet on a jump shot or, or, or is it the same as the classroom? Um, it's pretty much the same as the classroom. Um, verbal, I like to just hearing it. Um, I think that's how I learn the most. If a coach tells me to do something and I can process it and just go out there and do it on the hop, um, that's pretty much how I learn it, you know? Or yeah. even watching watching um, a coach do it or go through it, that'll help mm -hmm. me a lot too. Yeah. Well, you know, Aaliyah, you are uh, in your junior year and uh, you know, getting close to, to getting close to college. Have you thought about what you might want to major in when you get to college? Um, business, business would be a big thing for me. Um, I have my own mental health organization, so I like to, you know, take that the extra step and, and really get into that. Or sports psychology. Um, lately, I've been studying a lot about like you know, men, just the mental health aspect and, mm -hmm. and how to become better through, you know, learning and, and processing things, so. Well, you're a young athlete, but we are starting to hear more about, uh, you know, mental health is a real issue. And we're hearing more pro athletes, both male and female, come out and talk about, you know, hey, I have problems, bouts of depression or I have issues uh, with other parts of my life that, that are mental. Uh, talk about how did you get into that? Uh, what, what, what drives your passion for that field? Um, it all really started, um, I spent a lot of time in Dallas this summer, and um, there was a student from Timberview that was on the basketball team that um, unfortunately committed suicide, and that really was something that I was like, dang, like, we need to wow. wake up and really think about this, because everybody that I knew that knew her would be like, oh my gosh, like, you would never know, she was so happy, so giggly, you know, she loved it being around the sport, being around us, and then, um, I was just thinking like, I've dealt with a lot of mental health stuff too. Um, just going through, you know, ups and downs and, and mm -hmm. having to go through certain things. But I feel like sometimes the pressure of being an elite athlete, you know, you kind of feel like, okay, well, I can't even think about this because I have a game tomorrow. Right? I have to practice. Right. I have so many people watching me, you know, I have coaches to call. So I feel like, you know, mental health is a big part of your performance. So me, me just thinking about that, I'm like, man, like we're so worried about performance when really we're not performing well because of our mental health. So just being able to, you know, give people a platform and, and give them a voice to be able to speak up about it. That's what really got me more. I love the fact that you had that kind of experience and didn't just like, oh, I feel bad and I'm praying for the family. I mean, you went out and, and looked at creating services and, and bringing more awareness to, to this issue, which is uh, obviously growing. So I, I, I props to you on that for sure. Um, tell us, you know, coaches talk about why, you know, you've actually heard me say this to you, your body language on the court. But one thing coaches talk about is body language in the classroom. When coaches come out of COVID-19 recruiting and they're able to get on campus, if they were to come see you in class, what kind of student are you? Are you sitting in the front? Are you listening to the teacher? Tell us about what kind of student you are in the classroom. Well, I say I'm a very like engaged student. Um, I know sometimes my teachers, they might be like, oh man, this kid won't stop asking questions, but <laughs> that's just kind of how I, like, that's, that's how I am. That's how I learn. Um, I much rather know more than more than no less. So I sit in the front, um, just being engaged really. Um, that's about it. I just, man, I just know me, you know, I, I'm goofy, I'm happy, but I gotta get my stuff done. So whatever I can do, you know, I finish my work then, we can have fun and play time. But other than that, you know, I have to be sitting up in the front, paying attention, locked in until I can finish doing what I'm doing. I like it. Okay. Hey, let's switch over to you, uh, learning more about you personally. Let's let these coaches know about you and the, and the great family you come from. Uh, tell us about your family. Tell us about your mom and all the great work she does in the medical field and, and those around you who are, whether they're blood related or just extended family and how much support they give you. Give us a little bit about your family. Uh, yeah, my mom works um, extremely hard probably my biggest fan, my biggest supporter. Um, she's actually doing a lot of COVID stuff right now. So props to her, cause I know that's yeah. stressful. Yep. Um, you know, it's just me and my mom. So best friends, of course we have our days where we're like, oh my gosh, I'm sick of you. But you know, that, <laughs> that's that's my best friend for life. Um, Sean Hardiman, who was also my trainer. 
Um, he's really a second dad and his family, his wife, his um, four kids. They, they really keep me going. They motivate me. And everybody that I met through Sean, so like Kyra Lambert, Japrice Dean, they're all like sisters to me. So just having them around me, um, I feel like, you know, they say it takes a village and, you know, having all of my side is just kind of, and then you guys too as well. Um, you're always checking on me, Miss Williams, AJ, Josh, Daniel, all of them. So all of you guys. Well, you know, people who don't know you and know about the circle you run in, it comes up a lot when I talk to people about you. Uh, talk about that circle. Talk about how literally you're, for those who don't know, you're surrounded by current and former pro athletes in many different sports. What is it like to have that kind of base support of people who are playing sports at a professional level? Um it's it's crazy honestly like I think sometimes you get so caught up in like um oh they're they they got a big game today there's 50,000 people watching oh that's just my uncle oh that's just you know what I'm saying but then when I sat there and I really walked like thought about it I was like dang like I'm really blessed to have them around because I have people from all different kinds of sports and all different experiences so like have them around me um you know AJ's been through a lot in his career my uncle Keenan my uncle Fozzie like they've all been through you know different stories so just having them around to kind of like guide me through and, and mm -hmm. lead me in certain directions and say, Hey, yo, when I was going through this and my, my recruiting, you know, I went through this and I did this and I talked to this person, like all that stuff. It, it helps a lot. You know, of course, when I was younger, I'm like, Oh my God, can you stop signing autographs? I'm ready to go. I know you're <laughs> doing this, but that. having them around now, I'm like really just thinking about it, reflecting on it. Like, you know, I can't say I'm anything other than blessed just to have them around. Yeah. Well, it's a blessing and I, let's keep it real. I'm sure sometimes it's a curse because I know that I've talked to your mom and there are people who are like, oh, Leah, I think she's all that because she knows AJ and Errol Thomas and Fozzie Whitaker and all these people and stuff. Talk about that side, how people judge you based on your company and how they don't see that this is my family. I can't help that they play for the Texas Longhorns, the Buffalo Bills or the Kansas City Chiefs, whatever. What's that like? Um, sometimes, you know, it can definitely get frustrating because I think a lot of people see these people as, you know, celebrities and, and this and that. But in real life, they're annoying, big uncles, goofy, just all of that. <laughs> so, of course, you know, like I'm, I'm getting judged and, and it's like, oh, well, she she doesn't talk to me because, you know, she was with Earl Thomas the other day. And um, <laughs> man, I was playing Madden and he got mad at me because I was being like, it, it's stuff like that. Like, of course, you know is great but at the same time you know it can get overwhelming too because yeah. you have people who are like hey you know this person can you can you on my day like hi yeah, the oh, yeah. nice to meet yeah. you yeah <laughs> that's awesome yeah I, I always like to bring out the other side because people don't see that they just think oh it must be cool to all these people and i'm like you know sometimes it hurts her that she knows all these people because people think she's all you know better than them and how holier than that and i'm like she's nothing like that she's completely humble Let, let's talk about i know how hard you work uh you mentioned your trainer earlier and your coach uh with getting yourself your skills ready for basketball but when you do have free time when homework's done work on around tell these coaches what is it you like to do in your spare time what kind of hobbies what are your what are, your, what are you interested in away from basketball um, lately, I've actually been reading a lot, um, been working on the organization, but you know, like when I, when I feel like I'm in a space where I just need to, you know, relax for a little bit, PlayStation, or I'll go out there, hey, I watch Step Brothers about eight times a week, <laughs> go out there, lay on the couch, play with my dog, um, relax with my mom, that's about it, like, just really chill, lay back. What is uh what so you mentioned PlayStation I always that and every every student athlete in high school mentions that. What's your game? Are you two uh, K? Are you uh, Madden, Call of Duty? What what are some of your favorite games? Uh, I'm a Madden player. I don't know. It's something about playing two K. It's kind of weird to me because I I play basketball. So like I went through a stage where I was straight two K, nothing else. But then I'm looking at the game and I'm like, yo, like that's his help. He could have set that that cross and it just irritates me. So then I just had to get away from that game and go play Madden. I have to ask the question, I mean, based on the crowd and the extended family you have, I'm sure you probably know more about the game of football. You probably shock people with the level of knowledge you have about football. Uh, what's it like when you're over a friend's house watching a game? Like, wow, why are they in cover three right there? I mean, what, what's what been the response? Like, I thought you played basketball. How do you know so much about football? I always get all kinds of crazy looks, especially like if I'm at school or something and we're watching a game in the office and the coaches are like, wow, you you know what a cover two is. You're like, I'm asking, I'm like, bro, why did they say, 
why does safety come all the way up? And they're like, well, why did you know that? I'm like, eh. Because uh, then again, you know, like, I don't like to be like, oh, yeah, well, Earl Thomas is my uncle. And yeah. AJ, he's, I don't like to do that. So I just say I watch it a lot and just kind of leave it at that. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, tell us, you know, you know how big social media is in recruiting. Uh, for those coaches that maybe haven't visited your timeline yet, tell, the, tell them what they're going to see. What kind of message, what kind of brand are you putting out there about yourself when it comes to recruiting on your social media channels? Um, I like to be myself on social media. I know like a lot of players and, um, you know, you have some people that are really just careless with social media. It's not me. You know, I've seen, I've been around, you know, too much and too many people to do that. But, um, you know, I like what I like. I'm never going to get reckless, but um, lately I've just been working on trying to let people know that like, yo, you're not alone. So you'll see a, a lot of that. Um, yeah putting out some stuff that I'm learning, you know, along my journey. And of course, the all the photographer love that we get, um, always got to shout them out and give them their credit. So post those those cute, cute pictures of myself. <laughs> yeah, definitely cutie pie. Uh, tell us a couple of favorite things here. What's your favorite all time basketball movie? Movie? Oh, Coach Carter, for sure. Yeah, I got you on that one. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite food? Mm, that's a hard one. I'm I'm probably gonna have to go with um, Mexican food right there. Okay. So enchiladas, so tough. Okay, I like it. Uh, what about music taste? Who do you who you listen to? Do you have a favorite artist? What kind of uh, music do you listen to? Uh, a lot of Meek Mill, um, a lot of Drake, uh, J Cole. It's probably my top three. You okay. Know, you know, I, I don't like have it. any other way. I was grilling you on music, so. Okay. Well, Aaliyah, you know, you're, you're a good athlete. Uh, you could have played a lot of sports. Why basketball? W when did you fall in love with the game of basketball? Uh, of course, growing up around a lot of football players um, that think they're basketball players, I'm not going to lie. I think <laughs> my uncle Christian, he's the one that kind of, you know, got me in the gym. He played at UT, so um, mm -hmm. took me to Gregory one day on UT's campus, and then I just kind of loved it from there and loved that I can um, – work amongst others and make everybody better around me that's when I kind of realized like oh dang like I have this much control over you know helping other people that's what kind of like drew me to it so I love it okay um tell us you know I think you have a dream of maybe playing an NBA a WNBA T tell me I call this my dream scenario question let's say you find yourself at the WNBA draft uh who is sitting with you at your table waiting for the commissioner to call your name? Uh, of course, got to have mom right there, for sure. Okay. Um, my trainer, Sean, yep. uh, his wife, and my godmom. My godmom, my aunt Nikki, so them four. They've been with me, you know, every step of the way. And I was recently looking at this thing. It's like you have people in your circle that aren't in your corner. And uh, I know they're in my corner until, you know, the wheels fall off. So, of course, anything I can celebrate with them, they'll be there. I love that. I love that. It's a great saying. I like that. Uh, you know, coaches and, and students, you know, we're always about, we love having playing our game in front of a packed audience, uh, whether it's in the gym or in the football field. Uh, but, you know, what are you doing to give back uh, to your community, uh, whether it be in Pflugerville or, or, or anywhere else? Are you part of a church? Are you part of a nonprofit? Are you, you mentioned your own, but what are you doing to give back uh, to, to people who support you? Um, really, I'm just trying to connect, like, with the people younger than me. Um, so if I can get out to their games as much as possible and, and talk to them whenever I can, um, that's something I'm big on because, you know, I feel like today people are starting to get to a space where they feel like they're super good and then they forget that, oh, there's people coming up after me that are going to have to carry this when I'm gone. So something that I'm just trying to do is, is make sure that, you know, anything that I learn, they learn too, and they can just, you know, not have to go through the same mistakes and, and learn how to get through certain um, levels of adversity, you know, without having to be like, oh, dang, I'm so alone, so. Yeah. Well, I, I know you know this question better than anybody because of the, the, the circle that you have, a lot of former athletes who've retired, like Fozzie, like my son, AJ, and, and, and Keenan, but what do you want your life to look like when you're done with basketball, whether it's after a, a long WNBA career or if it's after college? What do you want sports to help you look like? What does your life look like personally and professionally when you're done with the game? Um, hopefully, um, somewhere still involved with sports, but um, more on the mental side of it. I feel yeah. like that's still a big piece, and hopefully it won't be as big of a piece missing by the time, you know, my career is over because 
I'm going to try to impact that all the way through, but somewhere, you know, a, a sports psychologist or something, you know, traveling and, and talking and, and letting people know that, hey, like, this is what I've learned. These are my experiences with sports. This is what helped me get through this situation and in, in this game and, and stuff like that. Okay. I like it. It's a great answer. A big part of being a successful student athlete at the high school and college level is communication. Uh, tell these coaches, how do you best like to communicate? Do you mind coaches challenging you, getting your face and yelling at you? Or do you prefer them to talk to you like a young woman? Uh, just take hey, coach, tell me what you need me to do and, and let me go do it. Uh, tell us how do you like to communicate with teammates and coaches? Um, with my teammates, I kind of try to like specify it with, through every teammate, you know, just learning, you know, what they respond to best. Um, but for me, at least I know, like, I'm not, I'm more of a come, if you feel like I messed up that bad, come get on me, come get in my face, come tell me what I did wrong so I can go on and correct it. Um, just, I had to learn to listen to the message and not the tone. Yeah. Um, but once I learned that, that was something that I really like, I enjoyed it. Cause my thing is if you're coaching me that hard, you care about me. So yep. just seeing that as something that's like, all right, now nah, let me make sure that I don't do it again let me go out here and, and give them a reason to yell, but for the right reasons. So. I love your, your statement, which is something I preach in my 30 years of coaching. Focus on the message, not the tone. The way I say it is, don't focus on how they're saying it, focus on what they're saying. Because as you know, there's a lot of athletes that get caught up in, oh, you hurt, you're trying to hurt my feelings, you're trying to disrespect me. No, I'm trying to make you a better player. So I love the way you, you put that. Hey, let's finish up here. Let's talk about recruiting. You're in your junior year. You've been kind of on the radar screen for a while. A lot of people know your name, not because of who you know or who you are around, but because you're a, a really good elite basketball player. Um, tell these coaches, what kind, of a, what kind of a teammate are you? How? Let me ask you this. How would your teammates describe you as a teammate? Um, I think my teammates would describe me as very, like, personable. Um, I try to lead them no matter the situation. Um, I'm a very – um on the court and off the court I'm very poised I'm not easily rattled so you know even in really tough situations just making sure that everyone around me is in a good situation to perform and and feel their best um I think my teammates will describe me as somebody who they feel like on and off the court someone that they can go to um at least I would hope so because I mean I work hard to make sure that they feel like that um just being you know a family member to them over everything. Yeah, I like it. Good, great response. You know, let's do a self-assessment here, Aaliyah. What would you consider right now in your junior year? What are your strengths as a player? And what are some of the things you're working on to develop your game? Um, my strengths, um, definitely shooting. Um, I think my IQ is one of my strengths. But weaknesses wise, um, I'm kind of in the middle of transitioning to a point guard. So getting more into that, you know, point guard mentality that constantly having to, you know, talk and, and um, I was actually at a camp this weekend with um, Chris Hansen and Brandon Clay and they were saying, being able to manipulate my teammates to get them in a position to mm -hmm. be in the right position. You know, like if I see something be like, hold on, wait, stop, you go here, you do that. And while being able to still read and be able to, you know, create for myself, so. That's probably one of my weaknesses that I've been working on. Okay, I like it. That's a fair assessment. Um, tell me, you know, would you consider yourself a dependable player, dependable to your teammates, dependable to your coaches? If you say, Coach, I'm going to be there at this time, you're going to be there. Would you consider yourself dependable? Uh, yes, sir, I would. Okay. Uh, and then tell me this. This is the big one. Uh, there, I always put student athletes, prospects into two different buckets. Those that love to shine in the game, and then the, the other bucket is those who love to practice in preparation to shine the game? Which one are you? Uh, I'll probably say practice. Um, I remember um, Skylar Diggins, I was at one of her camps and she said, uh, practice makes permanent. So, you know, if I feel like if I practice hard and I do all the right things and I watch the right film and I um, learn how to just really translate into the game, the game should come easy if I'm, if I'm going hard in practice and I'm really focusing. You know, I'm sure there have been times with, with all the different visitors, with my son and Fozzie and Ken and everybody else, and them coming over to your house and sitting on the couch with their tablets and watching game film. Are you big into game film? Are you studying opponents each week to find out what their weaknesses that you can take advantage of in basketball or not so much? Oh, I, I don't know what it is, but I'll sit there. I'll watch film for hours. Um, 
even today, um, I was watching film, writing stuff up and sending it to our coach to um, put in the sky report. So I think film is just big for me just because, you know, there's no better feeling than when you've been watching film all week and you get in the game and you just call out the play while they're running it. And then they're like, oh, snap. Like, I, I love that. <laughs> so, like, I yeah. Well, you, you know this from being around elite athletes, uh, you know, the better you understand your opponent, the more preparation and practice and film study. When you get to the game, the game slows down. And you've heard me tell you this over the years. When the game slows down, that's when you shine because you already know what they're going to do before they do it. And at any sport, whether it's football or basketball, that is the key to becoming an elite athlete. So I, I know you know that already. So that's great to hear that you are big into film study. Hey, tell us, is there a certain uh, basketball player that you pattern your game off of and who is it? Um, I think I try to take a lot from a lot of different people. Um, I love, you know, Chris Paul's mid-range game. That's something that I look at a lot um, NBA-wise. WNBA and, and pro, uh, I'm around Japrice Dean a lot. So watching the way, um, you know, her first step in and making her mind up right off that first dribble and that first look. Um, Kyra Lambert, her just mentality. Mm -hmm. um, on offense and defense, you know, she knows when to run the passing lane, what pass to make when, and then, um, you know, players like Ariel Atkins and Shook Sutton and uh, Joyner Holmes that I just watched play at UT, those are all people that, like, I love to just watch and be like, dang, she did this, let me take that and go work on it tomorrow. Yeah, uh, you've got a great list there. So those are all great role models. Hey, finishing up here, tell us, Aliyah, what every coach wants to hear, how do you define leadership? And how are you leading on your team as a junior this year? Um, I define leadership as doing the right thing when nobody's watching um, and, and being able to say, you know, hey, I saw this, let's work on this and, and let's just, you know, come together and be one. I feel like being a leader is being able to, you know, unite your team and make, make them all better. Um, I think this year, especially being my junior year, like, I was a captain last year because my freshman year we had um, 14 seniors. So yeah. we went from being the, you know, seven, eight player, ninth player coming off the bench behind all these seniors to being like, all right, team's on you. And um, this year, me being a leader, I've just been focusing on no matter when you come off the bench, when you're in the game, you need to be able to lead yourself. Um, I don't really want to be like, Oh, I'm the leader. They're my followers. No, we're all going to lead. All be lead at your role. Do what you need to do. And if you need me, you can come to me, but you need to be able to lead yourself too. Yeah, definitely. You know, I obviously known you a long time. I've seen you play up in Dallas. I've seen you play here in Austin and actually saw you play in Kansas at a, at a turn of a couple of years ago. I know you've always played up a couple of years against competition. Now that you're a junior, tell us how that experience is, although maybe a little difficult playing against older uh, competition when you were younger. How has it helped you now, now that you're a junior uh, going forward as a basketball player? Um, I say like the two categories that that really helped in was cap uh, with my IQ and my strength. Mm -hmm. um, being, you know, 11, 12 playing, because I think in Kansas, that's when we were playing 17s. And mm -hmm. that's when you uh, we were on the Adidas gauntlet. And that was just something like when you're playing against these big kids and they don't care how old you are right and the younger you are they found out i'm 12 they coach something out on the bench and they're coming for me they're like oh this this is a baby so now i gotta get stronger i have to i have to realize okay you're bigger than me you've been doing this longer than me what can i do to separate myself to where you're mm -hmm. like oh yeah she's 12 but but she's moving like a like one of us so like being able to you know me playing up and then me finally getting to my age I feel like it's helped me realize, like, I still have to continue to separate myself. Because, mm -hmm. like, like I said, I, they found out I'm 12. They're coming from my head. They're taking me straight yeah. to the paint. They're like, oh, oh, no. Like, uh, this is baby. Yeah. Why are you here? So, you know, just, just you know, constantly wanting to be better. And, yeah. and you know, pushing, constantly pushing, pushing people that are younger than me so they don't have to be like, oh. Uh, Oh, they said that no you're a freshman but you're up here now <laughs> yep do what i did when i was 12 and, and go ahead and push from there yeah well let, let's get to the, the 64 million dollar question as they call it uh let's talk about recruiting uh who have you heard from who do you want to hear from and what's been your recruiting experience so far um two of the schools that i've been talking to constantly um are howard and columbia 
Uh, heard from UTEP, ACU, a um, few more schools, Tulane. Uh, who I want to hear from, whoever believes in me, honestly, mm -hmm. um, whoever thinks that I can come in and, and impact the program, conference, division, none of that really matters to me. If you feel like I can come in and help your program, then I'd love to talk to you. If you feel like I can come in and, and play and just you give me the keys and, and we can figure this thing out together, then whoever it is doesn't really matter to me. Okay, I like it. It's a great response. Should be open. I know you know you've you know a lot of players and heard and been around players. You know it's D one or bus. Where I want to go to these schools and I'm just like you know what D one is not for everybody. And I know you've heard stories from from the Keenans and Fozzies and Aaron's and Earls and stuff. Uh, you know it isn't all it's cracked up to be. And I, I like how you have the mindset of division doesn't matter, words that doesn't matter. As long as I can compete and get a great education. And the really at the end of the day, that's all that counts. So I love that you understand that. Hey, finishing up here, uh, there's not a college coach in the country that doesn't love co uh, coaching a player with a high competitive spirit. Look in the camera right now, Leah, and tell these coaches how competitive you are as a player. Uh, all I'm going to say is you score on defense. I mean, if you score on me and I'm on defense and and I don't care what the score is, we're up by 40, down by 40. If you score, I'm going to be I'm gonna be mad. Um, I take it personal, honestly. Um, I don't like losing. I feel like winning is the expectation, really. Um, just I play to win. Whether I'm, I have 20, whether she has 20, whatever we need to do to win, that's what I'm going to put myself in the position to do, so. Yeah, no, I, I've watched you play. It's funny you say that because I've seen you play. I've seen you have games where you were shooting the lights out and I've seen games where, you know, just had a bad night and, and couldn't throw the ball in the ocean. But one thing we've always talked about is, OK, bad shooting night. Let me play. On my, let me focus on my defense. Let me focus on setting screens. Let me be a leader in other ways. And that's one of the things I love about basketball is that you can contribute in so many different ways uh, when your shot is off or, or whatever. And so I love that you're you're doing that and really embracing that. Hey, we're gonna finish up right now and let you get back to the rest of your night. We talked about the elevator pitch earlier. Look at the look at the camera right now, Leah, and tell these coaches who, who who either know who you are or don't know who you are why they should recruit you and what you're specifically gonna to bring to their program. Um, I think you should recruit me because I'm a I'm a game changer. Um, my court presence is something I really focus on. Whether I'm on the court, off the court, anywhere you know near the team, I'm gonna change it. Um. I come in, I lead, I do what I have to do, the extra hours, something that you don't have to worry about. Um, I feel like I, I genuinely am someone that, you know, you can overlook me all you want, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna earn your respect just because of how hard I work and, and how much I impact the people around me. So if you need a, a person who, I mean, I can score, defend, um, I feel like one thing I've never been caught is uncoachable. So, and that's something that I take a lot of pride in. Lazy and uncoachable, they're two words I don't ever want to hear in the same sentence mm -hmm. as me. So, um, if you want a kid that'll do whatever you need them to do, I'm, I'm the one. Okay, I like it, short and simple. Well, Leah, I appreciate you being our first female student athlete on the podcast. You did a tremendous job. Uh, we're going to get this out in front of coaches. I highly recommend you and your and Sean and your club coaches get this out. This is the kind of content where coaches go, this is why we chose Aaliyah over that girl from Dallas because of who we saw, what we see, and who she is. Because at the end of the day, you know this from being around a lot, a lot of elite athletes. After a while, when you as you go up the triangle of being a good athlete, you find out everybody's big, everybody's fast, everybody can shoot, everybody can defend. What's the difference? It usually is character, it's academics, and how, how they are coachable, like you mentioned, uh, and fit in a program from, from a culture and chemistry standpoint. And I think coaches will definitely see that of you uh, once they watch this video. So I'm proud of you. I'm always going to be proud of you. You know I'm here to support you 100%. And if you any, need anything or have any questions, don't feel, uh, don't, don't feel like you can't reach out to me, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate right, it. Man, tell everybody I said hi. We'll see you soon. Yes, sir. Okay. Bye-bye.